in the previous class we started discussing about the capacitor balance in diode clamp multi level inverters by using external circuit So we developed an external circuit. So that's a two quadrant chopper. So by using this two quadrant chopper, so we can transfer the energy in uh, one capacitor to other capacitors, right? So this is the control, or this is the, so this is how we will generate the firing signals for the upper and lower switches, right? So we need to generate only the firing signals. There are, we need to check two things. So first thing is, so when two capacitor voltages are greater than, if any one of the capacitor voltage is greater than V reference, right? And also we need to check VC1 is greater than VC2 or, or VC2 is greater than VC1, okay? So based on that, so we have different uh, scenarios out there. So we satisfied all the scenarios, okay? So this is how we will generate the firing signals for this upper and lower devices. So if you observe, so what exactly the circuit looks like. So what kind of application this is? What kind of application it is? So what is the application? Statcom, I think. Yeah, it's a statcom, right? Okay. So this is statcom applications or DSTATCOM applications more precisely. So this is the your grid, and here this is your nonlinear load. This is the nonlinear load. So our objective is to eliminate the harmonics, right? So here we use these three level diode clamp inverters. So we used these three level diode clamp multi level inverters, right? So we have two capacitors are there. So VC one and VC two. So VC1 and VC2, two capacitors are there. To balance these two capacitors, so we have this mechanism, and we have this additional circuit. So this is one of the example to balance the capacitor voltages, so with using external circuits, okay? So this is capacitors of, so usually charger from the grid. So under normal operation, so this is charger from the grid. By using a PI controller, so that means the capacitor will draw the capacitors. The re to charge these capacitors, you require real power, right? So the real power is obtained from the source. Okay, the real power is obtained by some source. So the capacitor, uh, so how exactly it is obtained? So by appropriate phase shift, uh, you convert a phase shift between this inverter and this grid. So in that case, the real power transfer will happen. So how exactly you will create that phase shift, okay, that we will discuss uh, in later classes, All right? So this is the applications where we use this uh, external circuit, All right? So here, so the drawback is, so we require some additional circuits. So there are other alternative circuits, so where you doesn't require this external circuits, so that is known as active neutral point clamped inverters right i think before that so this is an output so this is a simulated waveforms for this particular case so here these two are the capacitor voltages the blue and the red one are the capacitor voltages right so here so whenever some load is changed or some uh, something is happening so one of the capacitor voltage is reducing and the other capacitor voltage is increasing so you can observe that this is the this is causing some deviation in the capacitor voltages Okay. So once you once you initialize the external circuit, once you start initializing these external circuits, so now you can observe that these two capacitors are charging simultaneously. The two capacitors are maintaining the same voltage. So here, the reference is around 300, I guess. Okay. So 200. The reference voltage, it is maintaining the reference voltage of 200 volts. All right. So from here to here, the external circuit is absent. So once this external circuit is enabled, so this is the point where the two capacitors are balanced. Right. So there are other alternative circuits for this. So the next one is the active neutral point 
clamped active neutral point clamped so that is also known as ANPC active neutral point clamped so here the difference is so earlier we used diodes only right so earlier we used two clamping diodes so instead of these so we used two clamping diodes so what we did is so we replaced these clamping diodes with active switches so we did or we replaced these clamping diodes with active switches right so here the, if you replace with active switch earlier if it is a diode so the current flow is restricted so if it is a diode for example if this is the only diode you have if you have only diode here so in this case the current flow right so it will be like this only or it will be like this only okay so the current control is unidirectional you cannot control the current in both directions so once you replace with these diodes with switches so that means you can control the current in either directions so here so we can convert you can control the current in this direction or we can control the current in this direction similarly here you can control the current in this direction and you can control the current in this direction so the why capacitor unbalance is occurring means if you want to charge the capacitors we are unable to charge the capacitor right if you want to discharge a particular capacitor we are unable to discharge because the current flow is restricted by the load right the current flow is restricted by the load right so here so we can force the one capacitor to charge or discharge okay we can force the capacitor to charge for example this is the one if you want to discharge this capacitor we can form a path like this So we can form a path like this to discharge these capacitors, right? So therefore, so by using these active switches, by using these active switches, we can control the neutral point current. We can control the neutral point current. So that's why it is known as active neutral point clamped. Right. Okay. The extra thing is this is for three level case. In case of four level, similarly we need to replace with switches so what is the so earlier so you require only four switches and two diodes per phase so now you require six switches if the diodes are replaced with switches so obviously we have some extra circuit will be there right if it is active switches so it must be an igbt with anti-parallel diode so this is an igbt with anti-parallel diode so therefore so what is the additional thing is that so it requires additional driver circuit so this is also required additional dri driver circuit but in case if it is a diode so there is no driver is required right okay so that is the additional cost with some additional cost so we are achieving this right another drawback is if you are increasing the number of levels so we already seen that so the clamping diodes number is drastically increases right it will be m minus one into m minus two clamping diodes per phase you required so if it is a three level three minus one into three minus two so that is two per phase you required similarly if it is a five phase so five minus one into five minus two so that will be four into three so that means 12. so you require 12 additional switches you actually actually you require 12 diodes so instead of 12 diodes you require 12 switches that means igbt's along with their anti parallel diodes are required so therefore so this is not an economical solution right so this is only economical so when you have three level so if it is a three level so this is economical so replacing the diode with active switches that is economical for three level so if you are gone increasing the number of levels so this active switches this number is also increases right so this is no longer economical all right and moreover if this is the switches we need to design the firing circuit for this also so based on the capacitor voltages so we need to control these two or these igbt's so those are the drawbacks of this uh, active neutral point clamp so the advantage is we can inherently control the capacitor voltage so this is economical for three level so beyond that so this is not economical so this is another one so that is the active neutral point clamp so instead of using an external circuit so we are replacing the diodes with active switches so there is another one so which is known as off leg t type 
so which is known as off leg T type. So here this is also known as neutral point pivoted NPP, neutral point pivoted topology, neutral point pivoted topology. So this is for three phase, you have A phase here, B phase here and C phase. The structure is slightly different, right? So you have this is upper switch and this is the bottom switch. Okay, so this upper switch and bottom switch. So here the access to this, these are the two capacitors. So this is the midpoint of this capacitor. So how exactly that midpoint is accessed, if you observe this, so midpoint earlier, so that is accessed by either diode in case of diode clamp multilevel inverter or active switch in case of active diode clamp multilevel inverter. So this is how we access the neutral point, right? You can see here, the switch is used to access the neutral point. So whereas here, so this kind of switch is used to access the neutral point. Similarly for B phase and C phase, right? So what kind of switch it is? So what kind of switch it is? So if you notice that, so two IGBTs along with their anti-parallel diodes are connected in series or anti-series connection of two IGBTs along with the anti-parallel diodes. So what kind of switch it will form? So what kind of switch? It will form a bidirectional switch, right? It will form a bidirectional switch. So meaning of bidirectional means so it can block the voltage in either directions and it will allow the current in either directions. Right. So whereas this one, for example, this is a unidirectional switch. It will block the voltage in one direction, right? But when it will allow the current in both directions. So it will allow the current in this direction, in this direction, right? But it will block only voltage in one direction. So whereas this switch. So which is anti-series connection. So it will block the voltage in both directions and it will allow the current in both directions. You can see here, right? For example, this switch is on, right? So how the current flow will be? So if this is the current, so through this switch and through this diode. Okay. So one switch is, one IGBT is in conduction and one diode is in conduction. Similarly, if this is for reverse current flow, so it will be like this. So one IGBT is in conduction and one, I, one IGBT and one diode is in conduction. Understood? And this switch will block the voltage in forward direction and this will block the voltage in reverse direction. So that's why, so these are known as bidirectional switches are also known as four quadrant switches. So it will operate in all quadrant. For example, this is VI plane. Okay, so this is VI plane. So in this switch, so these will operate so in this direction only. Okay, no, no. Current will be negative, right? So this will operate in this direction. This is minus V and this is minus I. So this is for this switch. So voltage can be negative or positive. So whereas this one, so it will be like this and it will be like this. It will operate in all four quadrants. So one switch is like this. So another switch is operating in so this region. Okay, so this is minus V plus I and minus I. So if you combine these two switches, okay, so if you combine these two switches, so therefore we can obtain so this kind of four quadrant operation. So that is the basic objective. Understood? So one will block the voltage in negative direction and one will block the voltage in the positive direction, but both will allow the current in two directions, right? So if you combine these two things in anti-series, right? So that means so it will block, it will act as a four quadrant switch. Understood? Just simple thing, if you just, this is the one for this case. So if you reverse this one, so this is the, it's VI plane characteristics, right? If you combine these two switches, so obviously we will get so this four quadrant operation. So these are known as four quadrant switches. So we'll study some more on this, this four quadrant switches. This is essential.
So these are known as bidirectional switches or four quadrant switches. All right. So unidirectional switches passes unidirectional voltage and blocking unidirectional voltage blocking and bidirectional current conducting. Okay. So bidirectional current conducting. So either the diode will conduct or the IGBT will conduct. Right. So MOSFETs, IGBT with their anti-parallel diodes, right, MOSFET and IGBT with their anti-parallel diodes that will form a unidirectional switch. So whereas this bidirectional switches, so this flow just bidirectional voltage blocking, so it can block the voltage in either directions and whether the current conduction in both directions, right. So as of now, right, so earlier, so as of now there is no bidirectional devices are commercially available, right, so but we can obtain this bidirectional switches so by different ways. So one of the way is a simple. So we have diode here. Hello, sir. Sir, yes. your screen is not shared. Screen is not shared. It's okay. So now it's visible. Yes, sir. Okay. So this is uh, this is what we already discussed, right? So bidirectional switches, so bidirectional voltage blocking and bidirectional current conducting, right? So this is the one. And so we have these diodes. And a switch here. Yeah, exactly. So this is the one. So this bidirectional di switches can be realized in several ways. So this is one of the way. Okay. So four diodes surrounded by a, a switch. So how exactly the current flow will be? So if it is a positive current, so it will flow like this through this switch and through this diode and it will come out like this. Agree? So this is for this direction of current. So how many devices are at a time conducting? Two diodes and one IGBT. So two diodes and one IGBT are at a time conducting. If the current flow in the opposite direction, okay, so if the current flow in the opposite direction, so it will be something like this. So it will start flowing through the switch and so it is coming out like this. So again, so two diodes and one IGBT is in conduction, right? So two IGBT and one diode is in conduction, all right? So here, thing is that so you, you require four diodes, okay? You require four diodes along with one IGBT, right? And another thing is that, another thing is that at a time, three devices are in conduction, so two diodes and one IGBT. Right. So this IGBT is an always in conduction, right, is IGBT is always in conduction. So these diodes will help in blocking the voltage. So these diodes will help in blocking the voltage. So in case of forward voltage, so it will block these two uh, yeah. In case of reverse voltage, so these two diodes will block. In case of forward voltage, so these two diodes will block. Right. So depending on the voltage polarity, so either two diodes will conduct and the two diodes will block the voltage. Right? Okay. So here the losses are high because three devices are in conduction and and cost is also high. You, overall, you require four diodes and one IGBT. So there are other alternatives are, so one is the common. So there are other alternatives are there. So one is the common emitter configurations to two IGBTs. We can connect this one. There are two ways to connect this, right? So by using common emitter or, so this is base, right? So this is co collector and this is emitter. In other words, this is gate, collector, and emitter. So this is gate here, and this is collector, and this is emitter. 
for the other IGBT. Similarly, this is gate, collector, collector. So this is emitter here and this is emitter here. So what kind of connection this is? It's a common emitter connect configuration, right? And this bottom one is a common collector configuration. Understood? So one is the common emitter configuration. If you want two IGBTs along with their uh, right, along with their uh, things, you need to connect. So either you can use common emitter thing or you can use common collector thing. Understood? Right. So theoretically, or so how many devices are conducting now? So how many devices are conducting? If this is the current flow, so two devices will conduct, right? So this is the current flow, two devices will conduct. So here also two devices will conduct, so one IGBT and one diode. So IGBT of one switch and the diode of the other switch, so that will conduct, okay? But this thing is that, so if it is a common collector configuration, so if this is the common collector configurations, you require so each switch you require one gate driver circuit right so you require isolated gate drivers isolated gate drivers are required so here the gate driver for this one is different and the gate driver for this one is different so both are isolated so whereas in common emitter so we have a single gate driver is enough a single gate driver is enough so isolation is not required so can anyone tell us what is the reason for that so why only one gate driver is required in case of common emitter So where exactly will give the gate pulse? So we have three terminals, right? So gate, emitter, and collector. So where exactly will give the gate pulse? So where we will give the gate pulse? Hmm? Gate only. Gate only. Gate only. If it is an SCR, right? So where we'll get the gate pulse? Gate, sir. Only gate. Only gate. So how the ground is formed then? Emitter. Gate only. Emit. So how the ground? So you require two. Right. If you want to close the circuit. So you require two things, right? So how the ground is formed? So how the ground is formed? Gate is respect to cathode. In when, you study, no, when you are studying the gate driver circuit, if this is the circuit, so that obviously the gate signal is connected between the gate terminal and emitter terminal yeah. okay so gate and emitter terminals right so for example you are using a mosfet there are several things are right i think t elp 250 i think to lp 250 driver so when you are using this tlp 250 driver so this is we can use for mosfet and as well as igbt okay right or else uh we have this uh this is commonly used one so this tlp 250 I think we're also another driver circuits are there. I think I remember I R four forty two X or something. So this is another uh, commonly used uh, circuit. So this uh, this one is I think we have another one. I think I don't remember. Okay, that is M C three three something it will come. Okay, so that is also single low cost driver circuits. Okay. In most of the cases, we normally prefer this T L P two fifty. Try a uh, isolated uh, chip. Okay. So in this case, where we exactly will connect that? So gate and the emitter signals, right? So here, 
even though you are isolated gate and emitter signals but they are connected together right so these emitters are connected emitters are already connected together so even though you are trying to isolate that one so that will not possible understood so because emitters are inherently connected so whereas here the emitters are different right so here these two are different and these two terminals are, and these two terminals are different understood so that's why you require two isolated gate drivers so whereas here so this is common this is dip, this is one and this is the one understood so that's why so you require only one gate driver circuit even though if you apply up you if you separate the gate if you isolate the gate driver circuit so but isolation is will not possible so why it will not possible so ultimately you need to connect at or ultimately you need to connect emitter circuits of two devices emitter terminals of two devices so that means isolation not possible so therefore you can require only one so only one gate driver is sufficient okay so this is about the bidirectional switches so this is about the bidirectional switches so usually these bidirectional switches are earlier not available there are two ways to obtain these bidirectional switches so one is with four diodes and one igbt or common emitter configuration of two anti series igbts along with their diodes so most cases we prefer this common emitter configurations as why it is we why we used we require only one gate driver circuit right so these are actually commercially we have some igbt modules are there so if you notice that so this is a bidirectional igbt so here this extra line is there right so this extra line that indicates its bidirectional capabilities okay so this extra line so that indicates it's a bidirectional capabilities so nowadays the bidirectional switches are mostly used in matrix converters and also we have some reduced switch count inverters modern multi level converters are there some new generation multi level inverters are there so they are using this bidirectional switches so now the bidirectional market is also increased so therefore manufacturers are coming with uh, right so coming with the bidirectional modules so this is the symbol for a bidirectional igbt so this extra line is there right so that indicates its bidirectional capability or the four quadrant capabilities so this entire module is a so this entire module is a this is the configuration this mostly used for it uh, i think this is used for matrix applications so there are different bidash modules <coughs> so we have different manufacturers are there so one is the upex and jisys fuji semicron and semilab dynex so these are the different igbts with bidirectional manufacturers are there you can see here so this is the rating here 1200 volts 35 amperes and the ratings we have so ratings up to so we have ratings up to 700 1700 volts and 600 amperes current okay and this is the model name and cc9 so what is the meaning of cc9 what is its meaning cc means common collector with nine so nine switches are there so this is a module right so here so this is so what kind of connection this is this is right so this is six modules six modules are there right so it may be ce9 ce6 or cc6 so six indicates so how many modules are inside so this is six cc9 means so there are nine modules inside that so nine modules in most cases they are using for a matrix converter so db1 means so this is diode bridge so diode bridge based one so one is rbigbt okay so this one is rgigbt so this entire thing is there right so this is rg rbigbt so meaning of rbigbt is reverse blocking igbt so it's a reverse blocking igbt another one is ce1 a common emitter so all these things are rbigbt is one means one single device so nine means nine devices it will be formed in like this three by three form so in case if you study the matrix converter the switches are arranged like this c means common emitter all these things are common emitter or common so if you observe that so we less use this common collector so most of the case we either we use this rbigbt or so these kind of configurations okay so this is about the bidirectional switch <coughs> 